Hey guys, uh, I got another Mad Bob uh, picks review for you here. Um, Mad Bob's uh, Ghost Pro Tactical Entry Set arrived this morning. Uh, Mad Bob sent it to me for reviews, and so I I want to be clear right from the start off that uh, while Mad Bob sent me this set, it's going to have no influence whatsoever on my thoughts on it. Uh, I've got no connection with Mad Bob uh, commercially. And uh, so, uh, but I do hope that what I have to say is, is is useful to you guys out there wanting to pick up a pick set, and uh, so we can get on, and I can show you what he's got. Let's. Uh, so this is the Ghost Pro Tactical Entry Set. We can first have a look at the case to begin with. It's uh, stitching looks very nice. It's riveted uh, on the edges here. It's got a nice wide belt loop, as you can see there. Mad Bob logo on the front. Uh, nice Velcro fastening. You can get some, some nice flat tools in there. General quality looks very nice. I think that'll last a while. Then let's have a look at the tools themselves. We've got uh, three tension tools. I did a review of these tension tools uh, a few days ago. Um, please check that out. Uh, then, so I, I won't go any more into those. You can check out uh, the, the, the tension pack um, review on my channel. So we're going to put those to one side and then we're going to have a look on the picks themselves. So let's take this one to begin with. So we have a a ball half ball deforester pick. Uh, we have a medium hook pick. We have a half diamond and then we have a Bogota type rake and then we have a curved reach pick uh, an S reach pick and uh, what Mad Bob's calling a prince and a princess pick so I, I'll look I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about those in a minute uh, so you have a nice range there uh, the finish is, finish is nice it's in fact what I find is that it's exactly the same form as this is a Southall slimline pick without any handle uh, so I just want to use that as it may be a comparison you're familiar with so the form is pretty much identical to the Southall slimline pick and maybe a millimeter uh, wider on the uh, on Mad Bob's tool the length is exactly the same and the thickness in the metal is very very similar and also the the rigidity this is the Southall this is the Mad Bob the rigidity is 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 very similar indeed so you're getting very similar tools the fin the edge finish on Mad Bob's is is very nice there's no rough edges on that at all and uh, so I think they're, they're very nice very nicely done uh, we can also have a look at compare with a, a Peterson's Euro profile again the uh, the form is very much similar to uh, pretty much the same height as you can see uh, yeah but of course that's a this is a different ball game because you have these uh, molded injection handles and such things so yeah let's have a talk about 
uh, these princes and princess picks as they're called so really they are well these are this design in particular originally was called the the king and the queen picks uh, Mabob's very vari uh, variant is 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 different in that it has these curved uh, curved edges along the bottom on both of them the original king and queen picks were very angular on the bottom as, as well as on the top um, so these were developed apparently I mean the, the original king and queen picks were developed by taking data from all the common key bitting and distilling it down and uh, apparently making it into uh, two picks and you don't often find these designs in uh, in sets uh, Southall don't make this design. Uh, I know Peterson don't. Uh, I don't think special Southern, Southern specialities do. Uh, so this might be a nice try. I've never really got into these myself, so I couldn't vouch for them. Uh, the kid, the original kings and queens, as 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 nice tools. The one thing, the one thing I'm hoping will happen is is uh, one thing that I'm hoping will be the case is that there, I heard talk that these are the original kings and queens were quite problematic to use because of the angle angles on both sides the steep angles on both sides they, they could get trapped in a cylinder so I'm thinking and hoping that these curves on the edges here will actually uh, solve that issue uh, they're rakes of course and also because of these this up angle at the front and up angle at the back they're also intended to be used at different angles inside the keyway I also just noticed something that's quite interesting is this this curve here on Mad Bomb's tools uh, he's got the, he's got it on all of them maybe this is intended as like a a finger chawl, uh, somewhere to place your finger. Personally, I, I hold them. I hold my picks a lot more forward with my finger on uh, the neck here. Uh, but that could be quite a nice thing to experiment with. I'm willing to experiment with that and to and to see how it goes. Um, yeah. So that's the the prince and the princess picks, as as Mad Bobby is, is calling them. Uh, nice to include those designs because you, you don't often find them in 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 pick sets. A pick design you may be more familiar with is uh, the Bogota style rake. Um, so we can compare it here with uh, the original Bogotas uh, made by uh, Riamundo himself. These are hand they're handmade by him. And uh, so let's let's compare. The curves and the spacings so we can we can see there uh, that the the spacing of the peaks is identical to the originals which is very nice and encouraging to see uh, also the bottom cutouts are very very similar which is useful because it, it avoids stress points and, and uh, the pick breaking uh, so that that's that's very nice to see. So I mean, they're very Mad Bob's is very very slightly less rounded on the peaks, but I don't think that that's going to be an issue as such. Uh, it's very nice to see that these profiles are nowhere near as wide as say the uh, Southall Pagoda set, uh, which I which I've, I'm not impressed with at all. Uh, it's nice that that the the, the, the the profile is is much slimmer uh, on Mad Bob's, so that that's very nice to see. I think this is a very nice uh, rake to use and not nice interpretation of the Bogota design. Uh, so that that's that's very encouraging. Um, so always useful is uh, the reach pick. Um, 
I I prefer I use one of the, a reach pick is something that I use very often, mainly because uh, if I don't know the bitting uh, of a lock, I can use, and I usually start at the back. I can I can get into the back of a cylinder and this space under it prevents me from uh, uh, touching the other pins as I work forward. So a reach is a very useful addition to a set. Uh, this S reach, I don't know. I again, an S reach is not something that you you find commonly find in sets. It's a nice addition. I'll experiment with this. Um, I'm thinking that this edge here can actually be used as 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 a lever point. Yeah, so you can actually rest this on the edge of the cylinder. I'm not sure how, if it'll interfere with pins or not, but we'll, we'll see. But yeah, we'll, we'll see about this. I'll, I'll experiment. It's worth an experiment. Like all picks, I find that you know there are times when I click with it. Uh, there are times when I start with a pick and I just don't click with it, and it ends up in the junk box. Um, but you've got to give it a good go and see if it's useful to your own style. So that, that's that's very useful indeed. Then we have the, the half diamond, classic, always useful. I mean, the, the, the classic thing I always find with a half diamond is that because of this slope here, you can actually push a pin into position rather than just like a, a, a vertical motion, uh, just pressing the pin down. You can actually stroke it and push it into place. I always enjoy using a half diamond and I have a few variants of a half diamond that I find very useful indeed. Again, just highlight this curve here that uh, Mad Bob has put in. Uh, I'm thinking that, again, I'm thinking that's that's something just to rest your finger into. Uh, very nicely done. I'm going to enjoy that. Uh, the hook. Now. When I put the hook down on the table, I thought, ooh. Now, hooks I use a lot. Hooks, I, the majority of the picks I have are hooks. This is very steep. Yeah? Very steep. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe if I don't get along with it, I think it could take I could take a millimeter off the tip uh, and we'll experiment with it that way it's it's a very solid it's a very solid hook I mean you know you can put a lot of pressure on that and you're getting very little flex on it yeah At this, it's a nice little tool for sure and then we've got the uh, we've got the half ball deforester pick Again, just as uh, the reach, these are nice additions for reaching over the pins. So let's compare the form here. So they're very similar in curve. Ah, okay. No, no, that's not the case actually. So you can see that the 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 reach has got a much more of a sweep on it. Of course, if you put the points together. Uh, so the reach would be much more useful to get to those back pins, uh, but I think the the, the half ball deforester would be equally as useful in in its uh, in in particular circumstances. So I mean, really that that's the tools that you have. Uh, I mean, in general. I would say that picks of uh, like this, just the just the, the bare metal picks with no handles. Uh, I would always say I would always recommend these as, as say a backup set of picks. I wouldn't particularly use them as my main set of picks. Uh, you get a lot of hand fatigue uh, if you're doing long sessions with just bare metal handles. Um, it would be very useful. These picks here, this set here, would be very useful to say as a as an EDC set. But 
of course I'd only only uh, say that if it was applicable to the laws in your own country about carrying these sort of tools around with you um, yeah I wouldn't again I wouldn't make it as, as my ideal uh, main set uh, I much prefer the thicker handles of uh, Peterson's uh, there are they have a lot more they have equal feedback that I, I'd never have a problem with Peterson's uh, picks and feedback um, but of course this is an advantage of just having bare metal picks you really get every every single aspect of the feedback is coming back to you into your fingers uh, that is extremely useful so guys I think that's just about covers it um, I'm in all I'm happy with this I think it'll be used uh, I think it'll it, it's it's worth the buy if you're looking for a backup set or an EDC set I think it's worth it also worth it from the point of view that um, independent uh, lock sport tool makers really should deserve uh, support and uh, really should get a lot of encouragement uh, because you have the ability to, to speak to them, uh, to make changes to the tools, to make improvements to the tools. They're very approachable, they're very enthusiastic. And uh, in, in the end, the end products are uh, a huge advantage to, to, to pickers like ourselves. So I would really highly recommend that. I think that's all I've got to say really about it. Oh, no, no, I've got something else. I've got something else here. So I want to talk about these tension tools. Um, I did a review of them uh, the other day, that these three tension tools. And I would like something else in this uh, Ghost Pro Tactical Entry Set. And I'll show you what I mean here, yeah? Now I get along with pry bars. I, I use pry bars a lot. This is a pry bar type tool. And so we can see here that you get uh, a nice grip and you get your finger is on the flat of the tension tool which gives you very nice feedback. Yeah. So you can, you can have this at the, the 12 o'clock position or you can use it at the six o'clock position. So what you have here is a bottom, uh, the top of the key weight tensioning for us Europeans, Europeans here, but I can only get nine o'clock uh, tension and three o'clock tension, yeah? That arrangement. So the solution I think is uh, is can be seen here in a tension tool made by Lab, where you have a single twist and you have a double twist. So, for example, you can put this in at uh, at, at three o'clock and nine o'clock, but you can also put this in at six o'clock and twelve o'clock, which gives you a lot more versatility. Yeah, so I mean that would be the only thing that I, I would that I would really recommend if uh, you're buying some of these tools to go into the set, into this set as extras. They're the same length, uh, which is useful. Uh, I would recommend maybe uh, a couple of Peterson pry bars to to go into this set. Again, they they're very similar in in. In height, uh, they're not going to take up uh, much space at all. So really, that, that's really my only recommendation uh, as um, for additions to this set. Uh, they'd fit in very easily. And uh, so that's about it. So I hope that's useful to you guys. Um, I welcome any comments. Uh, you can go to uklocksport.co.uk and catch up with, uh, with the community there. Um, I very much, uh, you know, I very much recommend that. There's, it's a brilliant community. 
And uh, so I look forward to seeing you. Okay, guys. Take care. Bye.